Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and we're going to continue our discussion with David Kirkpatrick about Mercer County history. And Harrisburg would have so many of those fires, even after the Civil War, when you would think things were getting be getting better, because in 1879, they get their first fire engine in Harrisburg, which is pretty early. Yeah. Uh, first one of the old you know, pump ones, <laughs> uh, but they have one. It just doesn't do much to uh, to stop the fires. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, some of the, the some of the more famous buildings are built at that time. They, we had the arcade stable, so if you needed to, uh, it's the car park. You know, you can come park your car. You can park your horse in the stable. Uh, the Blue Front, which is still on Main Street today, and it, it's an optometrist office downstairs. But if you're ever in Harrodsburg, uh, the corner is a turret, so it's rounded like a castle. Yeah. And the upstairs would eventually have a theater, uh, which is just an, a neat building. And uh, the upstairs is closed today, but it was everything from a grocery store to, like I said, a, a theater, I think an opera house at one point. Uh, and someone can correct me on that one. The opera house may have been nearby but uh yeah a lot of prosperity and of course by 1890 harrodsburg has its first electric lights so moving up in the world (laughs) that's right Uh, daughter's college is still around in 1894 they become beaumont college that's important for later um yeah in the midst of all that in 1890 we have one of the most devastating fires in harrodsburg's history and it just levels uh, a large part of downtown so you've got a mix of progress and a mix of, of things falling apart. <laughs> first, first car shows up in Harrodsburg in 1900. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and a number of, of little communities around Harrodsburg that really uh, have filtered into the, the culture and the life of the county are in, in full swing at this point. You've got yeah. Cornishville, which has existed from very early days uh, out to the west near the Washington County border and uh, there on the, on the river. You've got Salvisa to the north, and uh, people have asked where the name comes from. And the prevailing theory is at one point, uh, the Kentucky River was called the Levisa. If you look at the Levisa River today, you see eastern Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it was The theory was Salvisa was halfway between the Salt River and the Levisa. So Saul Levisa. Mm. That's the theory. Mm. Uh, it's as good as any other, and we've got no reason <laughs> to discount it. <laughs> but uh, also around that, uh, probably one of the newer communities at that point is the city of Bergen mm-hmm. um, pops up because the railway will come through there through Temple Bergen's farm. He was a farmer okay. and he donated land for the depot. And uh, we, we know the Bergen family still in Mercer County. And uh, they shared with us that, you know, you, you think about a depot going in, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. And, uh, I think it was the LNN. I can't, I can't remember the, the train, but I think it was the LNN. His payment was one round trip ticket to Nashville. That's all they gave him. But, and then the family still has it. He never cashed it. Um, oh, really? so they, they have it sealed in a plaque. And what a neat piece of history that is to see. That is, that is cool. Yeah. Well, you know, all these little communities, and there are so many others. Uh, Harrisburg, or Mercer County at one point had two communities named Bushtown at the same time. <laughs> one on the east side, one on the west. Uh, we've got Kirkwood and, and so many of these communities that no longer mm-hmm. exist. So th- those are all feeding into Mercer County's history as well yeah. as you go into the 20th century. Well, well you, you talk about Bergen and the, the train. And that's, I mean, that's really how it happened in a lot of places is, hey, we're going to put a depot here. Um, somebody would donate the land, 
and then it would be it, that's what it would become. I think Moreland in Lincoln County here, same thing. A guy gave yeah. the farm, a guy named well, last name Moreland, then it becomes Moreland. And then right. the, the depot shows up, and then the town kind of builds out of it. Um, now, and it's, uh, that was pretty much the same with Broadhead in uh, Rockcastle County. You know, the, the depot comes up, and that's where the town just kind of bubbles out from it. Yeah. Uh, well, right off, another question is so, so obviously, you got Harrisburg, you got right. Bergen, uh, Salvisa, mm-hmm. any other like actual townships or, you know, uh, besides those three or is, is Saval, does Salvisa have a township or is it just a community? I think, I think it has a township. It's got a post office and mm-hmm. it's got its own zip code. So yeah, it, it, it's still Cornishville at one point was a township. Now it, it mm-hmm. shrank some in size uh, over the years, but yeah, that, so those are probably the, the big ones. And I'm sure I'm leaving one out that, that someone will call me on. So yeah. you're right to distinguish, but there are a whole bunch of communities. Yeah. Oh yeah. But not everyone turns out to be uh, a township. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, which, I mean, we might be getting to this eventually. Um, Cause Bergen is still an independent school district, right? It is. Yep. It's a what, K-12, I believe, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. All the way through. And then, then you got Mercer County and um, that. Uh, how many elementary schools are in Mercer County now? That's a good question. I, I, is there just the one? Is it no, one? I think there's two. Uh, I, see, of course, my son goes to Washington County, but uh, it is one school district. You know, you, up until 2006, Harrodsburg had its own city school. So you had three independent school districts mm-hmm. in Mercer County. Um, but, and they're building a new elementary school now. So that whatever the number is, will soon go up by one. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, back, back to turn of the century. Um yeah, there's, and something, it, there's something built, right? I believe, right? We're getting to that point, or rebuilt, I should say. I, I, we are. We're closing in on it. <laughs> uh, you know, again, a big focus on technology and growth. We mentioned uh, the le- electric lights. It, by, by 1900, you've got the waterworks going on in Harrodsburg. Um, that's 1893. So you, you've got an ice factory. You can, you can go get ice, you know, those early days. So there's a lot happening, uh, including the Tollgate Wars, which is where all of central Kentucky deals with that where the, the toll gates that used to maintain the roads are burned down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of some violence in there as well. Um, but by 1915 Harrodsburg has a hospital open. So things are going really well, but in 1927, two very important things are built. And uh, we always cite this as an example of how Harrodsburg tries to embrace the future as well as the past. Mm-hmm. The first thing that they, they begin working actually started years before and that's Dick's dam. Yep. And uh, it was the largest earth filled dam uh, in the world at that time, no longer, but at that time. And uh, it was uh, made in, here in central Kentucky without federal help in any way, I think. And uh, though the federal government did come and view it later, we actually have a clip that of FDR being at, at the place. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and, you know, again, it, it was a marvel of technology at the time. It provides electricity. Uh, Harrodsburg created uh, Lake Harrington. Mm-hmm. So that's a big deal. But while they're putting the finishing touches on Dick's Dam, they're also finishing up Fort Herod, mm-hmm. uh, or rather the replica of Fort Herod that became the state park. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pioneer Memorial was what it was called back then, but today it's Old Fort Herod State Park. And the people realized, especially in, in 1924, that was a big anniversary for them. It's 150 years. Um, they realized what a valuable piece of history they had. And they always knew that, mm-hmm. but an effort really put forward all over the United States in the early 1900s to preserve, you know, the past. And uh, a lot of research was done. Colonel Chin ended up being uh, a local character, ended up being head of the historical society a few decades later. But a lot of people there in town put forth the effort to construct uh, old Fort Herod. And uh, it's it's a neat piece of history that you could still visit. Uh, but so those things are going on at the same time. And uh, we get our fourth courthouse in 1929. So a lot of building projects uh, <laughs> you know, taking place. And then, of course, in 34, and I alluded to it earlier, FDR uh, comes to visit Harrodsburg. Mm-hmm. This is the midst of the, the Great Depression. And he sees Dick's Dam 
but he also goes and visits Fort Herod and he gives a speech uh, in, in the shadow of the fort. And he basically says, uh, the people who came here weren't afraid of obstacles and they weren't afraid of the unknown and they built the community anyway. And in the midst of the Great Depression at a time when people were really concerned about the country and whether it would stand or not, he was calling on that same pioneer spirit, as mm -hmm. he called it. Yeah. And uh, it resonated. Cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We even have in, in, the, in the library archives, we have a card that they, I guess, was handed out to local residents. And it said something to the effect of it. I'm paraphrasing this horribly. You know, if you see men in suits slinking through your backyard, don't worry. It's the Secret Service, you know, <laughs> the 1930s. But it was urging caution. But the, the pictures of how many thousands of people uh, showed up for that uh, wow. is, is pretty, pretty yeah. neat. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's uh, I would say so. That's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, presidents have visited Kentucky, obviously, before. Um, but uh, that that's a pretty, pretty cool one. You know, pretty cool one to, yes. to, to have, you know, there and, uh, you know, give a speech and all that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> and forewarn yeah. you to, about people with suits. You know? That's right. <laughs> so watch out for the G-Man. You know, they could be lurking outside. So. A very different time. Um, and then in 1937, all of Kentucky is affected by the big flood. Mm -hmm. But one quick note I do want to add on that, which I thought was neat. And I'm sure other community, communities may have done this as well. But for anybody who doesn't know, the most historic flood in Kentucky's history takes place in 1937. And there were even bridges that were impassable across the Ohio. So if you're yeah. a Kentuckian and you were in, you know, near Cincinnati, you had trouble getting Good back. water. <laughs> yes. And the water rose so quickly. And again, this is the days before uh, weather um, alerts. The, yeah, the meteorology and, and this, the electronics and, and the technology really couldn't predict too far ahead. Mm -hmm. And so the water was rising so rapidly in Louisville, you have people stranded on their roofs and that sort of thing. So it was like Hurricane Katrina, but without the hurricane, just yeah. the aftermath of the water. And a lot of people in Mercer County, uh, Lake Harrington had, had been around for uh, you know, several years at that point, loaded up boats and drove as far as they could and then tried to rescue people off roofs. And they even had wow. two boys who formed a toy club and they collected toys and donated them to children that had lost everything. Wow. So again, just speaking to Harrodsburg's desire to play a role in Kentucky history and help others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty big event. You know, from the statewide, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, and not, not just Harrodsburg affected, but, you know, uh, multiple places, but still, uh, uh, you know, again, Harrodsburg, Harrodsburg's pretty uh, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure lots of people helped out. It, it really is a, a neat, even in that tragedy, it's neat how Kentucky pulled together. So, yeah, yeah. Just a and, neat foot in yeah, and I mean, even you know, if you want to, you know, nowadays, you know, the past few years, Kentucky's had its, uh, you know, handful of tragedies or you know, big, big weather events that people have you know, uh, stepped up for as well. So again, it, the the Kentucky spirit's been around for a few hundred years. Yep, it still endures. So I, I'm I'm proud of that. In my very biased opinion. <laughs> uh, and, and speaking of you know spirit and and community and and willingness to sacrifice, of course, moving into World War II, uh, the Heritage of course had many people who served in World War One and the Spanish American War, uh, but World War II really sticks out uh, because before the war began, uh, a group of Harrisburg men who were part of the 38th uh, of the 122nd Tank Division were sent to the Philippines and stationed there. And so was, uh, 66 men uh, went. And of course, uh, when Japan launched its attack, it attacks the Philippines uh, as well as Hawaii. And uh, they fight as long as they're able to fight and they're finally ordered to surrender. And they do. And uh, so uh, this group of men from Harrisburg participates in the Bataan Death March, which was one of the most horrendous aspects of of a very horrendous war. Mm -hmm. uh, and those that survived were interviewed by Department of Military Affairs when they returned. And the, to read the transcripts, which we have at the library and Frankfurt has, um, lots of places have them, uh, it'll turn your stomach of what they went through. Yeah. But uh, they, they survived. And like every community of Kentucky, you know, hundreds of others served. 
and uh, many sacrificed, you know, in some and some sacrificed all. Um, but it was it was particularly difficult um, at, at that loss. And there's a neat Time magazine photo uh, taken in Harrodsburg of the Blue Front that I mentioned earlier, that, that castle looking building. Mm-hmm. And it posted veterans in the windows of the shop. And so the picture is taken behind the crowd looking in and they've got the broad brimmed 1940s hats the women do and, and yeah. stuff. And uh, they're just silhouetted from the light from the window, but they're staring in at the, at the veterans and you can tell uh, it's a heavy moment in town, Yeah. but uh, you know, they survived the war and uh, you know, the community picks up the pieces for those that were lost. And even in that time, and you know, there's an effort to remember it's the community uh, we've got paintings in the court, excuse me, paintings in the post office. Uh, if you go in and look, reminding people of uh, Fort Herod and, and the courage those people displayed. And there's a neat picture from just before the war where uh, they drove one of the tanks up uh, to the fort walls. And so you have people <laughs> in Pioneer are reaching over the wall to shake the hands of the people in the tank. Uh-huh. So it's another way, uh, the modern era drawing on the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it, it, it really... Uh, continue the spirit of celebrating Harrodsburg and its history. And a lot of other things happened around this time also. Uh, in, in 1962, or not 1960, rather, George Chin, like I mentioned, becomes president of the Kentucky Historical Society in Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. He was a Harrodsburg, a Mercer County resident. Uh, Pleasant Hills formed in 1964, the, the foundation to, to bring Shaker Village back uh, from sort of the dilapidated state it had gotten in over the years and make it mm-hmm. something to remember. Uh, and then, of course, in 1974, Harrodsburg has its bicentennial, which was a massive celebration. Yeah. And uh, it, it's fun to read about some of the things they did then that probably won't happen now. Like James <laughs> Harrod had a beard. So oh, all yeah. men who didn't have beards were jailed. They, were jailed. <laughs> they had a wooden stockade. And yeah. uh, if you got arrested for not having a beard, you paid a dollar or something uh, like that. You yeah, know, into some yeah. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of things had, had, have shifted since then. Mm-hmm. But it, it was just neat to see uh, how the community came together. Uh, and, of course, like I said, in 2006, Harrodsburg and Mercer County School Districts merged. And uh, the city's gearing up now to celebrate that anniversary. But uh, all in all, a lot of history in, in 250 years. And I'm sure I've left out something that someone thinks I should have mentioned. But we have a limited time. <laughs> we only had we only had the highlights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, like um, like most of these county videos that we, we, we've done and talked about, you know, you have the overview, and this has been a, a, an excellent overview of the county and how, uh, you know, you're hitting the high notes, but like, you know, obviously, uh, you can talk about an episode with the Shakers, you can talk about an episode of Civil War, you can talk about an episode of Bergen and Salvaisa and um, any other numerous uh, communities um, within Harrodsburg. Or within Mercer County, um, uh, but the, yeah, this uh, you know uh, you know you, you think about Harrodsburg and Mercer County, and you know they're both fairly old uh, settlements and you know places in Kentucky. I mean, you know, uh, seventeen eighty five is, is still quite um, quite old. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so um, um, yeah, um, well, another one I was about to ask of, of you know famous people from Harrodsburg, but the current lieutenant governor is is from Harrodsburg or from Mercer County, right. uh, Jacqueline Coleman. So that, that's something. Uh, any other uh, anybody else that famous wise right off? Um, We've had four governors that were living in or born right. in Mercer County who yeah. served. So we I only mentioned two of them. Uh, we mentioned uh, Colonel Chen, of course, like you mentioned, uh, Lieutenant Governor Coleman today. The number of derby winners, I don't know if you're counting four-footed folks. but yeah. the horse industry we're, we're in really, Kentucky. <laughs> uh, very big there. So uh, Ben Ali Hagen uh, would end up living in Mercer County. He was a very famous horseman. Uh, a lot of information on him at the Kentucky Derby Museum and in places like that. Um, so yeah, but the, the list goes on and on. I was trying to think of who else. Well, and, and so the governors, let's say uh, Slaughter, Adair, McGoffin, and. Was it Letcher? Bob Letcher? That may be wrong. I don't know. Uh, it might be Letcher. Yeah, yeah, Letcher. Robert Letcher. Yeah, Robert Letcher. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I thought uh, that's 
which we, which there's yeah. a video we got a video out there about the four histor or five historical facts about uh, Harrisburg as well. Uh, you can check that out. And of course, there's there's the James Harrod. We've talked about him quite a bit. Um, also, some state champions, right, in Harrisburg, I believe, Mercer County. That's right. right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Was it the girls, girls basketball? Football, uh, girls basketball. Yeah. I guess, but maybe it was back to back or something. So. Something like that. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Like you think so about uh, some state champions and stuff uh, in sports and stuff, and you know, some counties don't have any. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I shouldn't say any. Uh, you know, when you think of like the bigger, you know, basketball, baseball, football, you know, out there in soccer, um, uh, volley, volleyball. Yeah, I guess the bigger sports that you think of. You know, obviously there's some, maybe uh, golf and other things that yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then one other thing that Harrisburg, which I didn't mention as far as the 20th century, but if you have a smartphone, the glass in your smartphone is developed at Corning, which is a glass factory in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Really? Huh. I did not know that. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, uh, huh, I got a smartphone. <laughs> That's right. So every time you unlock that, thank you, James Harrod, and those who came after. Yeah, yeah. So so all those people who say, you know, you know this is made in China. Nope, nope, not, not the glass. <laughs> That's right. Developed here, so... Uh, uh, which is the thing that too you, you think about and thinking about a, a county's development and so forth. Um, and Harris or Mercer County is is pretty solid. You know, they, there's some industry there and so forth um, that that it, that is pretty pretty well uh, developed and so forth. You know, I, we we did a episode uh, with Kenny Tab about um, Harding County and Elizabethtown and that sort of stuff. And you know, he talked a lot about how uh, you know you know industrialized and factories and stuff are in, in say Hardin County. Um, but, but when I'm thinking of like say Lincoln and, and yeah, you know, not, not so much Boyle, but some of the other counties around in this area, Harrodsburg is pretty, pretty solid in that, that sense, you know, they, they, they have some uh, factories and stuff and, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I just really like any time I've been to Harrodsburg, any kind of event, it, it, it's, it's really good. There's a lot of good stuff going there that, um you know, to go and check out um, a taste of history was, was there right. <laughs> last right. year. You know, it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, but it seems like there's always something going on in Harrisburg. That's uh, worth, worth visiting. And especially when you think about history, um, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, Kentucky history, even more. So they, they take that very seriously. They started planning for the two fiftieth. the Harrisburg Mercer County tourism commission started planning for that five years ago. Uh, so yeah, they 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 they're trying very hard to make sure they've got a wide array of events for people to come see uh, all throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, that was my next uh, question to ask you. Um, time frame wise, as far as when do these events start? Like, what's the actual set dates or like the big things? I know they always had the reenactment uh, there in the middle of June. Um, right. Uh, so what 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 do you know about all that? <laughs> Well, start watching now. You know, there's yeah. a Facebook page and there's a website for Harrodsburg 250 that, that you can join uh, and, and keep up with the events because you'll see things begin to build up. For example, uh, just in the library, and I mentioned that because I work there, uh, we have a, a wooden statue of Kentucky on display that we borrowed from uh, the state archives where it, it's been since it was created in 1982. So it's, it's something like uh, 24 feet long and 12 feet high. Uh, and so it's, it's big, a, a big piece of Kentucky's history. Uh, there was an art contest. They're going to be printing postcards and they got local students involved. Uh, there's a documentary being developed that we're going to air locally. Oh, cool. Uh, so, so all this is, is kind of building up. Most of the events are happening the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th of June. So that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, the Saturday prior to that weekend, uh, there's a parade, which is going to be excellent. Uh, they've got a lot of talent coming in for that. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on that four day period, especially, but from now up until June, you should see a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Um, any, anything else, Ben? That sounds, uh, sounds good. Anything else about Mercer County that uh, worth mentioning right off? Of course, like I said before, plenty of other episodes to dive into, uh, to get into more specific events and, and, and so on. Um, anything else you can think of? 
Well, I can go into part two if you want me to. So. <laughs> uh, sure. not, probably long enough as it is, but yeah, that's that's a good summary of it. There's so much history, like all of Kentucky's counties. Uh, there's an unending list of interesting facts and stories, but uh, I think we'll leave it there for now. Yeah. Uh, what well, one thing I just thought of too? Uh, Mercer County was one of the. Um, counties of Kentucky that was named and formed by Virginia. Marshall County is a Virginia County of Kentucky. Um, I think it was maybe seventh or eighth, maybe. Uh, um, Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lincoln, Jefferson, Fayette, then Nelson, uh, like Bourbon, Madison and Mercer were kind of the, I think the next ones there. So, um, and then Woodford at some point. Um, But anyway, pretty awesome. If you have a, have a chance or opportunity, especially in June, um, and just or just follow the Facebook page um, uh, on on the on the Harrodsburg uh, 250th and see what's going on. There's going to be plenty to go on, um, plenty of stuff. Oh, another question: How many historical markers do you think is in Harrodsburg? Oh goodness, that's a, that's an excellent question. That's probably something I should know. There are at least at least a dozen. Uh, if not more. And then you'll see local things that are not state markers that are highlighted as well. Yeah. Uh, so quite, quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, well, you said it as well. About every town in Kentucky you can go and is, has historical sto- has stories to be told and find. But, you know, Harrisburg is one of those that just has a lot of that early Kentucky history for sure. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, if uh yeah go check out harrisburg mercer county plenty of going on plenty to check out and see uh we will definitely talk some more mercer county history uh, as uh the time goes because there's plenty to talk about but anything else i think that's got it all right well thank you all for listening and uh, we'll see you next time take care welcome to the kentucky history channel where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel. The stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.